Jared Pullen from Nosephoto.com, and this is a review of the Tamron 70 to 300 F45 to 6.3 for the Z mount. This is the first third party lens on a Nikon Z mount camera. And I took it out into the real world where I photographed my niece and nephew at the park with permission. I didn't just show up to some park and be like, I'm taking pictures of you kids. They're mine. I mean, kind of, they're my niece and nephew. And I also went out to a division one basketball game to photograph St. Joseph's University with a lens like this, which isn't something that you normally take into a gymnasium situation and use because it's an F 6.3. So we're going to look at those images. We're going to look at prints that were done with this lens. And then I'm going to tell you, do I think you should get it if you're in the market for something like this? Now let's start with the outside of the lens. You have a lens hood. Now, if you're new to photography, the rule is, if you have a lens hood, you put it on and you leave it on when you shoot. One, it just looks awkward when you have it like this. You look more like an amateur when you don't have it extended. And two, it can protect your lens. If you bang it against something, you're banging the lens hood and you're not banging the actual lens. But more importantly, you look professional and it also cuts down on any stray light that might come in and interfere with your image. There are no buttons on the outside of the lens. There's a USB port for some reason that might be for updating firmware or for doing some corrections. I'm not even sure why they put that there, but there are no buttons. You do have your manual focus ring right here on the back of the lens and you have your zoom ring right here at the front. You've got 70 to 300. So it's a pretty easy lens to go ahead and zoom. It's a short throw to go from 70 to 300. Now in terms of weight, look at me, I'm juggling the lens. I don't want to drop it because it doesn't feel like the most extreme lens in the world. Now there's no IS built into this so you don't get image stabilization, but it weighs in at 1.28 pounds or 580 grams. Now it has RXD stepping motors and we'll talk more about the autofocus as we get into the sample images, but I did shoot this on the Nikon Z9. I chose to use the Z9 because couldn't find the battery for the Z50, and I don't think we have a Z5 anymore. This might not be a lens that someone who owns a $5,500 camera is investing in. I wouldn't recommend it because you have a pro body, you should probably put pro lenses on it, but I wanted to see how the autofocus would work on this, because if the autofocus doesn't work well on something like this, it's more than likely not gonna work so well on your Z50, your Z5, your Z6, or your Z7. But this would be one of those lenses that someone just starting out might want to have for photographing their kids outdoors, maybe not so much indoors, but I'm going to show you how I was able to succeed with it indoors in a low light situation when we get into the images. Now, in terms of filter thread, you have a 67 millimeter filter thread. That means 67 millimeter lens cap. Now, if you're new to the photo world, someone might try to sell you a UV filter for the outside of this lens and tell you it protects your lens. Don't get a UV filter unless you're shooting paintball or on the beach or doing something like that. Don't put a UV filter on this. I have pro lenses. I don't put UV filters on them because it might cut down on, on, on the quality of the image that you're getting. Because if you put a terrible filter on your lens, you're cutting down on quality right there. So my recommendation is they might try to sell it to you. Just opt not to buy it unless you really think you're going to damage the front of your lens. I don't worry about it. But anyway, let's jump into the images. Now, I went out to the park, as I said, with my niece and nephew. They were running around. It was an overcast day. It wasn't too cold. It's a good situation where this lens could be used. Are you going to shoot soccer? Your kid's playing soccer out on the field. Are they going to be playing baseball? That's why a 70 to 300 is a nice range because you can get a little bit closer uh, in terms of if they get if the subject gets close to you, but you can always zoom out and reach and grab someone at a distance. Just be careful grabbing people when you're at the park. If they're your kids, that's okay. Someone else's kids, not so good to grab them. Now here with the first image, Jace climbed the jungle gym and I'm like, all right, let's show people the 70 millimeter. You do have some vignetting around the outside of the lens, uh, around the corners. I don't care about that. I always find that vignetting draws me into my subject. You can get rid of that with lens correction inside of the computer when you're editing in Lightroom, but I don't usually get rid of it because I like that it draws me in. It's fine. The colors are fine. The focus is fine because you shouldn't really be missing in a situation like this where he's just standing there. But 
when we moved over to the slide and he was gonna come down the slide, that's where I ran into a little bit of a focusing issue. Even though I'm at a fast enough shutter speed to get him coming down the slide, the focus tracking didn't do a great job with the Z9 in this situation, getting him in focus as he came down the slide. Now at the top of the slide, he's perfectly fine. The colors, the tones, they're fine. The sharpness, it's fine. You would expect this lens to be fine because that's, that's what it is. For the price, it's going to be fine. It's gonna be one of those starter lenses. It's not meant to be pro, and that's why I need to keep that in my mind when I'm reviewing it, that it's, it's a basic lens. It's gonna get the job done. It's for people who just wanna get out there and take pictures that are better than their cell phone, and you're absolutely gonna be able to do that in this situation. Now, I went ahead and said, Jace, go run a little further and then run back towards me because I wanted to test out the autofocus. Now, this is out at 300 millimeters. And when we zoom in on this one, I had trouble getting him in focus. I just, all I thought of was Taylor Swift right there. Trouble, trouble, because I like, I like Taylor. She's my number one artist for the last two years. But it's focused on his collar, if it's even focused on the collar. I had trouble tracking him here with the Z9. Now, the Z9, I was using IAF, lock on tracking, face detect. It shouldn't be that hard to do it. And if it's having trouble in this situation, it's probably gonna have trouble in a lot of other situations. Now, I don't think that's a lens issue. I, again, come back to this time and time again that we know Nikon is trying to evolve their autofocus to make it better and better. They've taken steps with that with the Z9, and we hope that that trickles down into the lower end cameras as they release them, which will make their autofocus even more accurate. That's not to say that you can't get stuff in focus, because I absolutely did. It was just a little more difficult in this situation getting him running towards me where it wasn't nailing the focus time and time again. But for something like this, where he finished running and he's just standing in front of me, I'm like, Jace, just stand here. I want to do a portrait at 300 millimeters. And that looks great. The colors, the tones, the sharpness, I put some Skittles on it. I did. I used preset Skittles from Fro Pack 1 and then tweaked it a little bit to my taste. But the background looks nice right? You can see that it's blown out and not distracting because it's super deep at a soccer field. So for those of you just starting out and you want to do portraits, you can absolutely do portraits with this lens, even if you're at f6.3. Let me jump in here real quick because I want to show you this photo taken with the 70 to 300 lens and edited with Fropac 3, starting with Zoolander, followed by Walter White, Prestige Worldwide, November Rain, Mount Airy, Mentos, King Contrast, Gotham for People, Eckert, Capone, Canadian Tuxedo, Almost Famous, and Fifth Element. But I want to show you my all-time favorite from Fro Pack 1 called Skittles with one click. Boom. That looks fantastic. So look, if you're looking to speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point or want presets that just work, well, we created 15 custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. Over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters, and if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or, if you want to save even more and get Skittles from Fropack 1, you can pick up the triple play bundle of Fropack 1, 2, and 3 and save even more. Now, let's get back to the video. One thing I didn't mention a little earlier is that it's a variable aperture lens. That means at 70 millimeters, you're at 4.5. As you zoom out, you go to f5 and 5.6. And when you're at 300 millimeters, you're at f6.3. And so if you're in auto modes, the camera's gonna make the corrections for you for the proper exposure, but they not, may not be perfect in every situation. I set mine to manual and then I just tweak after the fact in the raw file because I know where I want my shutter speed to be and I know where I want my ISO to be and then we know that the aperture is going to change slightly. So keep that in mind. As you zoom out to 300, you're gonna lose a, bit, a little bit of light and you might need to compensate for it. But I'm really happy with how this picture turned out because I like the colors, I like the sharpness and I like how the background blew out. So it's gonna be perfectly fine when it comes to shooting portraits. Now this case where we have Juliana here, we're at only 157 millimeters. Background looks fine. It's not too distracting. But if you were to photograph someone at a distance at 300 millimeters, then the background is definitely going to end up being more in focus. Like a soccer field, the players will be in focus and then the random parents screaming on the sidelines at the ref telling them that they're terrible and they should go home and they should never do this again even though they're out of shape. I almost wanted to say 
overweight, but we'll just go with it. The overweight guy is yelling at the ref who's in shape. Yeah, don't do that. Don't be that guy on the sidelines or girl on the sidelines yelling at people. These are like eight-year-olds playing soccer. That's a PSA right there. But I, I like this image. It's good. And the similar shot right after this, where, where are we at? We're at 200 and my eyes don't work. 283 millimeters is what I think the little words say right there, the little numbers. And this is Jules right here playing with her little Polaroid GoPro knockoff camera, making YouTube videos, telling people that she needs more likes and shares. That's what she figured out from watching YouTube is that she needs more likes and shares. And that's what she was trying to do. But the portraits are fine. Focus is nice. Sharpness is nice in this situation. But what about in a situation like a basketball gym? Now, this is a Division I team. This is St. Joseph's University. They are playing basketball against Loyola, Loyola Marymount of Chicago or whatever they're called. Now, generally speaking, this isn't a lens that you want to take indoors because it's a lower light situation for the most part, especially when it's 6'3". Normally, I want to be with a 70 to 200 2.8 or a 70 to 180 from Tamron shooting in a situation like this. Now, let me tell you what my settings were. I was at 1 1,000th of a second at 12,800 ISO because I know I want to freeze the motion at a thousandth of a second and in order to do that I need to raise the ISO up higher and this camera handled it really well because you can see from the print out that yes there's some noise and grain when you get closer to the print but if you're five feet away from it you're not sitting there going wow 12,800 just looks absolutely terrible and this one as we zoom in he's sharp ish and I will tell you I had trouble with the autofocus again when I was using the lock on tracking the IAF when I was using the smaller box with the IAF until I finally turned it off and went DSLR style turning on the old school focusing mode and then it seemed to hit perfectly fine I hit more going old school than I did relying on the new tech which is not a good sign for the autofocus as we continually say but it was a good sign for my images because they ended up being sharp and in focus. You can see at 6'3", how everybody is pretty much in focus in the background. You have the cheerleaders, and that's where distractions might come into play. But as we continue on with action at a distance, you can see I'm at 1 1,000th at 5.3 aperture right here because we're only at 164 millimeters. So I'm gaining a little bit more light than if I'm out at 300. The images are fine, right? You can get your focus, and you should be able to shoot with the Z6 and the Z5 at 10,000 or 12,800 and get away with it. Just understand that you need to show, you need to shoot in manual and not in the aperture priority or full auto because there's no way the camera is going to give you the proper exposure every single time versus locking it in like I did. Oh, now would be a good time to tell you that if you want a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on fronosphoto.com, put your name, email address in it, and I'm going to send you that guide for free because it's going to help you in lower light situations just like this one. But as we continue on to the bench shots, keep in mind, if you're gonna be photographing your kids with this lens indoors and they're sitting on the bench, they're riding the pine, well, they're not running fast. They're not moving. So you can drop your ISO down, which then drops your shutter speed down, which then gets rid of a lot of that noise and grain. And as we zoom in on this shot, look how sharp it looks. The eyes look good, the skin looks good, the lighting looks good. So you can do it. Just remember, drop that ISO down, drop that shutter speed down to compensate, and you're gonna have a much cleaner shot when the players are on the bench. Coming up the floor, we have this player here. Yes, as I zoom in, you see the noise, but that's zooming in. When you print it out, you don't see that noise. And I printed them out on the Canon Pro 1000 printer. That's my printer of choice right now. I absolutely love that thing. And it doesn't matter if you have a Canon, a Nikon, a Sony camera, a, a Fuji, a Pentax, you can print anything you want off of that Canon Pro 1000. Fantastic printer that I highly recommend for anybody who can sell their prints and make some money. But this is fine. Again, as we zoom in on the background, this is what you get when you're at 5.6. The background can be a bit more of a distraction. And that's the difference between a 70 to 200 and of course, something like this that is a variable aperture lens. That and price. And the last image right here is this guy going up for a slam dunk that he, fe he fell short of, because you can tell right here, he isn't exactly gonna float unless he has a rocket up his ass to get up to the basket in time. He ended up coming up short. He actually did have some good ups there, but this is great. The fact that I was able to do this at, I should be at 70 millimeters. No, I'm at 81 millimeters for this. He looks fine. I'm not happy that I cut his toe off. Generally, I would 
would be sitting lower on the floor, but they made us sit up on the, the bleachers this time, so we didn't get run over. But it's a good shot, right? Lighting's good, 1 1,000th, F4.8, 12,800, and this print looks fantastic. But how much is this lens? This is a $699 lens. Is that expensive? Uh, Back in the day, you could get a 70 to 300 for a couple hundred bucks, but that was maybe 15 years ago. And now with the new technologies and the new systems, everything's a lot more expensive. So you're at 700 bucks for a lens like this, but it's, I question one thing. This is the same exact lens that you can get for the Sony E-mount, just not with a Z-mount, it has an E-mount. And that lens is 550 bucks when it's not on sale. It's 150 bucks less. Why is it more expensive on Nikon? Is there, a, is there a tax that Nikon is charging? Or is it possible that Tamron won't be making as many of these, which means the production run isn't as high, which pushes up the cost of everything? I don't know. Is it worth 700 bucks? Well, for the person that needs something like this, the answer is gonna be yes, because Nikon doesn't have much else other than this. What'd you say, 2,200 bucks, Steven? $2,200 for this 100 to 400 lens. That's a great lens. It's an awesome lens. Great for nature, great for outdoors, great for sports, wildlife, whatever. Not good indoors because it's pretty long with the, the 100 millimeter, but you're looking at 2,200 bucks versus 700 bucks. So for the person that just wants to photograph their kids running around, this is gonna be a very good option on Nikon. Now you could go and look to adapt an older 70 to 300 from Nikon. That's a $600 lens that could be an option, but you have to remember you have to use an F to Z adapter and you may have gotten one for free. You may have paid 150 bucks if it was on sale or if it's not on sale, it's $249 at the time of making this video. So it's probably not worth adapting the older lens unless you already have an F to Z adapter or you already have one of those older lenses. It's gonna be good enough when you go ahead and do that. And there is one other option that you could look at from Nikon. It's a 24 to 200 millimeter variable app aperture lens that's right around 900 bucks. No, you're not getting the 300, but you have the versatility of kind of like one lens to rule them all from 24 to 200. You just have to decide, do you want something that's a mega zoom, 24 to 200, but doesn't give you that reach? Or do you want something that gives you that extra bang for your buck with the 300 millimeters? Two more things. We've got a sniff test and a wind tunnel test. Let's sniff it. Oh. Dracar Noir, that's right, it smells like the 90s. I don't know why it smells like the 90s, but it smells good, because I was, I was in the 90s, being that I was born in 1981. Wind tunnel test, Steven, let's see how it does here. I don't have a good, I don't have a good feeling here. <sighs> I was right, fails the wind tunnel test. So if you were looking to see if it passed or failed the wind tunnel test, <laughs> Failed the wind tunnel test, but that shouldn't really affect your buying uh, of this lens. What do you think about this? Is this a lens that you want to put on your Nikon camera? Do you already own it? Leave some comments down below, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Poland, Photo.com. See ya.